to make them. In this episode, we're recreating the Nexus from Star Trek Generations. It's an okay movie written by Ronald D. Moore and Brandon Braga, as well as other Star Trek projects. Ron D. Moore went on to do Battlestar Galactica, Outlander, and For All Mankind, while Bran and Braga went on to do Jerry Ryan. Yeah, I wrote that whole Ron Moore bit just so I could add that joke. Along with Kirk dying, Data getting an emotion ship, the destruction of the Enterprise, Kirk coming back and then dying again, the Nexus was the cool bit we all talked about afterwards. The effect was created by ILM's computer graphics team, with the legendary John Knoll basing the tendrils on a NASA simulation of the magnetic field around Uranus. Those guys created a complex 3D model, and while it's probably possible in After Effects using some plugins, I thought I'd take a stab at doing this another way. Faking 3D and being more in control of the final look. As with all my videos, I focus on the techniques involved and leave you the freedom to tweak the final look, so you could use this ribbon effect in lots of other ways. At the heart of this effect is a shape layer. We're going to create a line, use an included script to control the line's points via null layers, which gives us a wobbliness. Then we'll add a bunch of effects to the layer. We take this as a precomp and use its shape to drive a second shape layer, which will help us create that wake you see in the final shot. Let's jump into After Effects. Here we are, and I have a standard 1080p comp. And now let's select the pen tool and draw a line with around five to seven points. Click and drag as you go so we get rounded curving joints. Just something a bit wavy, although being separate points, you can shape these however you wish. Once drawn, expand your shape layer and the shape and delete the fill effect. Expand stroke one and up the stroke width to around 25. Now, to get the ends to be thinner, expand taper and set the start and end lengths to 50%, which means the tapering takes off 50% of the whole length of the stroke so that the tapering only gets to full width in the middle. To add a little bit of fluctuation, using the tiny add menu, add a wiggle pass property. Set the detail to four and the points to smooth and the wiggles per second to 0.3 so that it happens once every three seconds. So we get some shape changes in the stroke, although the next step will allow us control over the macro changes. Expand path until you can select path one's path. Then go to window, create nulls from paths. This is a built-in script that is massively useful. In the pop-up choose points follow nulls, which creates nulls for each point in the shape layer and you can adjust these individually. Quick word of caution, shapes are definitely 2D only. You cannot make the nulls 3D layers and get the path to move in Z space. Now we're going to add a wiggle expression to each null so that we don't have to manually animate the movement. But before we do that, let's take a preparation step to allow us to make changes easily. On the shape layer, go to effect, expression controls, slider control. Hit enter and rename this effect to frequency. Then hold control and tab D to duplicate the effect and name this one to amplitude. Set frequency to about 0.3 and amplitude to 100. Double click on both so that the values are exposed on the timeline. And now, on the first null layer, hit P to view the position property. And holding Alt, click on the stopwatch and type wiggle, brackets, and use the pick whip to link to the frequency, comma, and pick whip the amplitude. And make sure there's a closing bracket. What this does is tell After Effects that 0.3 times per second, as with the path wiggle every three seconds, move the position by up to 100 pixels. Now select the expression and hold Ctrl and tap C to copy it. And then using Alt and click on each null's position area and paste the expression into each null layer. You can still alter the position of any null, but each one will wiggle a little automatically. Okay, now let's add some texture. Shape layers can take effects just like any solid. So with the shape layer selected, go to Effects, Noise and Grain, Turbulent Noise. Set the type to swirly, and then expand transform and uncheck the uniform scaling. So the goal is to make this noise look like lots of twisted ribbons of cloud. 
So we want to set the width low, like 20. And we don't want tops and bottoms so much. So set the height to about 240. Now let's offset the noise so that it appears to animate. And we could use keyframes, but I like to use an expression so that I don't have to make changes if I alter the length of the comp. So holding Alt, click on the offset stopwatch and type square brackets, zero, comma, time times minus 30, close square brackets. The zero is the X coordinate and setting it to zero just leaves it in the corner. By using time for the height coordinate, that automatically animates the value as the comp plays. And minus sends the noise upwards as the top of the comp measures from zero. Adding a value to it counts down the screen. So by using minus, we move upwards. If you're doing a reverse shot of the Nexus, you might want to remove the minus so the rolling happens the other way. And 30, well, 30 seems to be the right multiplier for the speed I want. Let's also animate the evolution. Alt click and type time times 100. Okay, next go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, CC Vector Blur, and set the amount to 5. This softens the edges and adds a little distortion. Next go to Effect, Color Correction, Tint, and set the colors for your Nexus. I went with 6B5569 for the black, and 6F9890 for the matte white 2 option. Finally for this layer, let's add some fake 3D roundness. Go to Effect, Perspective, Bevel Alpha. And you can see this adds shading to the top and bottom of the ribbon, especially if you adjust the angle to be zero. Up this until the shading meets in the middle. And maybe drop the light intensity to about 0.2. Now all that lovely detail Turbulent Noise gave us, we're going to obscure as much as possible. This is because the longer the Nexus is on screen, the more our eyes will spot issues. So by using a glow effect, we'll get just glimpses. It's one of the many VFX tricks I've learned over the years. Weirdly though, I found by adding a glow directly was not nearly as good as adding it to an adjustment layer, just for this case. If anyone knows a reason why, please let me know in the comments. So, let's go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and then go to Effect, Stylize, Glow. Set the Based On to Alpha Channel, up the amount to 16 and the intensity to 2. This is quite strong, and it's one area you'll probably tweak depending on your final shots. But the overall animated effect is quite compelling, I feel. Okay. Next, we need Video Copilot's free Sabre plugin. If you don't have that, there's a link in the description. Sabre is one of the great cheat effects that gives an awesome final result in a lot of circumstances. So pause this video, go get the plugin, but like save the bookmark for this page because frankly, when you discover all of Andrew Kramer's tutorials, you'll have forgotten to return here. Sabre users, while we're waiting, today's password is Spot. It is Cat who we never hear about after Star Trek Generations. Although he does survive the crash, at least. Post spot in the comments below, it really helps my analytics. It shows me data about pacing and such, and it's a cool way for you to check in with me too. Are we all back now? Cool. We need a solid to add Sabre to, so go to Layer, New, Solid. Make it a black solid and comp size and click OK. Hit Enter and rename this layer to Sabre and set the transfer mode to screen. And then go to Effect, Video Copilot, Sabre. If I expand Customize Core, I can set the core type to layer masks. But we have a shape layer path. What we need to do is create a mask path on the Sabre layer, and then we can link it to the shape layer so that the shape transfers. Using the pen tool, just click and draw two points. Hit MM to expose the mask properties on the timeline. And then expand the shape layer until we see the path. Using the mask path pick whip, link it to the shapes path. Boom! You've got to admit that's a really neat trick. You know, you could admit it privately, 
or you can declare your public love for me by liking this video. Now all that's left for this effect is to go to the presets and choose Torch. And then change the colour to a light pink. I went with E796C0. Now it's all moving upwards, which isn't particularly right for us. So for my Patreon supporters I have a bonus video, <laughs> just kidding. But I had to lampshade that as I've just made two calls to action in less than a minute. To remove the upward movement, expand distortion and then expand glow distortion. And drop the wind speed to zero. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine how pissed you'd be if I'd hid that behind a paywall? Okay, playing that back and... It's not great. Saber is obscuring the ribbon for the most part. But I do want it above the adjustment layer. So go to Effect, Channel, Set Matte. Select our shape layer and choose Effects and Masks. And then check the Invert checkbox. Okay, that's sort of the end of part one. The next stage is we need to place this in 3D space and add its trailing wake. So to do that, create a new comp and add our Nexus comp to it. Make it 3D and then go to Layer, New, Camera. And then back on the Nexus layer, go to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient, and choose Orient Towards Camera. So that sort of cancels out the 3D effect, no matter where we move the camera to, the layer always faces us. So to make this clearer, add a 360 star field. I have a preset and a tutorial on how to make one, feel free to pause the video and go grab that. And once it's in place, you have a bit more of an idea of what you're looking at. Oh, you'll need to set the Nexus Transfer Mode to Screen. And now to create the wake. Double click on the Nexus Comp so that it opens in the timeline. And copy the shape layer by selecting it and then holding Ctrl and tapping C. Back in the Space Comp, Ctrl and V should paste it in. But it's all broken. In the Effects panel, delete all the effects. And jump back to the Nexus Pre-Comp and expand the shape layer until you can see the path. Then at the top of the timeline, right click on the comp's title and choose Undock Panel. Drag this timeline up so you can see both timelines. In the space comp, expand the shape layer until you can see the path. Then, using the pick whip, link this to the original. There we go. We now have a shape duplicated again, just like with Saber. Make sure the shape layer is 3D and make it a child of the Nexus comp. So where one moves, the other stays with it. Using the tiny add menu, choose Repeater. We're going to create a streak of ribbon by having the repeat so closely together it appears to be a solid. Expand Repeater 1 and expand Transform Repeater 1. Set the X position to minus 9 and the Y position to minus 15. And then set the amount of copies to 20. And if the Nexus is moving away from the camera, set the scale to 101%. Or set it smaller if the wake is meant to be behind the Nexus. And set the end opacity to 0%. So each copy is further away, larger and fainter than the one before. We could add lots more copies and hide the gaps with smaller increments. Or we could go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Box Blur. And set the amount to 10. So this has given us a mat, which if we position a 3D layer with turbulent or fractal noise on, will allow us to control the shape of the layer while still getting a 3D angle. Drag the shape layer below the Nexus Comp Create a new solid, make it 50% grey, and make it 3D, and a child of Nexus. Then drag it below the shape layer and angle it and position it so that it comes off at the angle you want. And then 
use its track mat setting to use the shape layer as an alpha mat. And now we're going to use a trick to prevent the shape layer getting in the way of the nexus. We don't want the 3D layers accidentally intersecting. We can prevent this with a 2D adjustment layer in between the comp and the shape layer. Okay, last steps. Add a turbulent noise to the solid. Set the type to dynamic. And in transform, uncheck uniform scale and set the width to about 20 and the height to double that. And we'll use the same offset turbulence expression from earlier, but maybe this time set the value to time times 200, so it's really fast. And also add time times 200 to the evolution. And set the effects blending mode to multiply. This just darkens it quite a bit. And to get the colour, go to Effect, Colour Correction, Tritone. And just make the middle colour a richer brown. I went with 985948. Now remember, if you add a light source, both the Nexus and the Wake layer need their material options set to not accept lights. But that's it! That's all the tricks! Normally I do a plug for my Redbubble store where you can support my channel by buying some merch, but the visuals for this video are all copyrighted to Paramount, I think. And if you've watched this entire video wondering how I did that close-up shot in the Nexus, that was achieved using the Pay4 Helium plugin which can render volumes inside After Effects. Expect a review video soon. And the actual volume was a free download from Embergen. It's their tornado loop on its side. I'm not planning a separate tutorial on that shot, but let me know in the comments if you want one. And finally, if you're wondering about how I blasted a hole in the Enterprise B, I use C4D Lite and the Bool tool. I might end up doing a tutorial on that. Let me know in the comments if you want one. Thanks very much for watching. I think I have time to do one last call for action. 